Good morning, everyone, or good evening, everyone, or greetings, everyone. This is Dr. Brian Scott with you. This is another Insight to the End Times podcast. Uh, yesterday, as we started this week, we're almost finishing up the month of January. We will finish it this week. But yesterday, we were looking at, is there a pre-tribulation rapture? And why, it's, why is the rapture pre-tribulation? which we shared with all kinds of scriptures and all kinds of explanation. And we used Noah and his family as a type in shadow. They went through what was the equivalent of a, of a rapture. They were removed from the earth before the floodwaters, before the wrath of God, and then they were returned to the earth. So very similar to what will happen in the last days of this age we're living in. The rest of a good portion of this week, almost the balance of this week, I want to sh ask you the question, will you qualify for the pre-tribulation rapture? Will you make the cut? And in order to answer that question, what we need to address is, well, what are the requirements? W what do you have to do to meet those the, the requirements the, or the standards to be part of the pre-tribulation rapture. Well, we go to Scripture, and we go to the book of Genesis and to Noah and his experience with God because he made the cut. He qualified. And what did God say about him? Well, this, I want to give you four statements God mentioned about Noah, which qualified him and his family to make the cut. Firstly, in Genesis 6, 9, God says he was a just man. He was a just man. He was a good man. Secondly, he was perfect in his generation. That takes it up a step from being a just man to being perfect in his generation. Thirdly, he walked with God. Well, that's a strong point right there for every Christian today. Are you walking with God or are you just visiting with God from time to time? Fourthly, in Genesis 7, 1, it says God found that he was righteous. Noah was righteous before God. So there's four points. He was just. He was perfect. He walked with God. He was righteous before God. Enoch was raptured as well. And in Hebrews 11.5, when we're talking about the, the hall of faith, not the hall of fame, but the hall of faith and members of the hall of faith, it is said about Enoch that he was here and then he was not here because he pleased God. So those are pretty strong statements as to the qualifications to be part of the pre-tribulation rapture. I'm going to give you three requirements. Firstly, you must be born again. A lot of people think they're going to heaven simply because they were born in this country or they were, had a membership card in a church or they were a good person, et cetera, et cetera. But you must be born again. Jesus said that to Nicodemus. He said, Nicodemus, you must be born again. In Romans chapter 10, Paul, writing to the church in Rome, gave two statements to them or two qualifications to them. I'll read the verse to you. Verse 8 says, sorry, verse 9 says, If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and you believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And verse 10 says, With the heart one believes unto Righteousness and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. So you must be born again. A lot of people don't even know that expression. I was raised in a denominational church all through my early years. We became born again. Our family became born again. It was not accepted in our church. It was shunned on. It was rejected by our denominational church, one of the mainline denominations in our nation. They didn't like that term. And I found in our small village with about eight different churches, there was only one church that used the expression born again. So there's an awful lot of people who are church people 
or good people. Amen. But they've never been born again. That's the very first requirement. Here's the second requirement. You must be baptized. There's several verses for that. In fact, in Mark 16, 16, here's what it says. He who believes and is baptized <coughs> will be saved. And in uh, Acts chapter 1, verse 5, Jesus told his own disciples. He said, uh, John the Baptist baptized you with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So you must be baptized. Uh, baptized in water means full immersion. Uh, it's more than the sprinkling concept that we practiced in our denominational mainline church. You must be baptized in water. It's symbolic. Jesus was baptized in water, full immersion. That, that, that causes a stir amongst a lot of people. Probably will cause a stir amongst some of you. But are you filled with the Holy Spirit? Have you been baptized with the Holy Spirit? Is that a prerequisite for salvation? Is that a prerequisite for heaven? Time will tell. I've always been of the opinion, if I know there's something more I can do, I better do it and, and get on with it. Here's the third requirement. You have to live like a Christian. Your, your Christianity has to be 24-7, not just periodically when you decide you're going to attend a church service or a church function. It must be 24-7. And people must be able to recognize that you're a Christian by your lifestyle. Come on. I'm trying to help you today. Christianity is more than just a prayer. It's a lifestyle. Give you some verses for it. Here in Matthew chapter 10, verse 22, and also in Mark chapter 13, verse 13, here's what Jesus says. He who endures to the end will be saved. So that takes this verses on salvation up to another level. You have to endure to the end. You've got to be a Christian all the way through. In Matthew 24, Jesus made this statement in verses 11 through 13. He said, many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. Oh, do we know that's true. Lawlessness is everywhere, even amongst people who are good people. And their love for other people, their commitment to other people, their stability, their loyalty, it can dissipate and disappear overnight. And we've just uh, seen this happen time and time again in our ministry uh, people who were going to be with us to the end, the end came too quickly for them, like a, about a year after they joined us or whatever the time was, and they left. Here's what Jesus concludes his statements with in verse 13. He who endures to the end shall be saved. In Re Revelation chapter 2, verse 25 and 26, Jesus is writing to a church there. It's called the corrupt church in Theratira. Theratira. As he says in verse 25, hold fast what you have till I come. He who overcomes and keeps my word until the end. That's the statement. He's saying you got to carry this on all the way through. So what's required to qualify for the pre-tribulation rapture? Will a prayer of salvation be sufficient? Possibly, yes. Maybe no. It's in God's hands, number one. He's the one who decides whether you make the cut or not. He's the one who decides whether you have done what he's required of you. Um, but at least you need to be born again. Just because you're a good person who has a church membership card, I don't expect you're going to make the cut. That's just my personal opinion. Based on this, you can't go to a football game like the Super Bowl's coming up shortly. You can't go to that without a ticket. You need a ticket to get in. You have to pay the price to get the ticket to get into the game. You can't go to the theater without a ticket to get in. You pay the price. You can't go to a movie to get in without a ticket. you got to pay the price. Why do you think that sequence of events is so necessary? You must pay the price of your salvation to get into heaven in the pre-trib rapture. I sure hope I've helped you today, but we got a lot more for you this week. I look forward to you. You joining us as we continue this study this week. Thanks for joining us today. Bye for now.